There is a force ability considered to be so depraved that it has started wars among the Jedi, the greatest civil wars that the Jedi Order has ever seen. And today, we will be discussing what the Jedi consider to be the unforgivable force ability, the ability of alchemy, and what makes it so vile. Beyond any other force ability, it was alchemy that the Jedi hated the most, viewing it as the most insulting thing one could do to the force. I see your tenacity for knowledge is strong, and your curiosity for the dark side insatiable. For generations, the general concept of the dark side as viewed by the Jedi is that it was an evil practice of the dark ways and sinister motives. While the dark side can be viewed just as another perspective on the Force, there are a few things that it studied that are undeniably strange and frightening. While using one's hatred to manifest lightning, or using the Force to inflict pain upon others is detested among the Jedi, there existed a practice that the Order hated beyond all other dark side knowledge. This was the very thing that got Ajunta Pal and the other Dark Jedi followers removed from the Jedi Order in the first place, and what caused the Second Great Schism and the formation of the Sith. That ability was alchemy. Those who are deep with legends lore will have a keen awareness of this phenomenon and the many atrocities that have resulted from it. Many Sith practice alchemy in the Order's long history, and it would be Plagueis, and especially Sidious, that would find it to be their primary hobby outside of their works as Sith Lords. But what exactly was Force Alchemy? What could it do? And why was it considered by most, even the Jedi, to be the most evil thing to come out of the dark side practice? Well. Stick with us today as we dive into the research notes of the ancient Sith and manuscripts of the Dark Lord's long past to discover the truth. Let's start with the basics. What is Sith alchemy and how did it work? Ironically, despite it being a main point of contention in many stories, we know shockingly little about the actual process of alchemy or what it really does. We usually find the results of an alchemical process within living creatures, those that have been mutated. Alchemy can also strengthen weaponry and forge artifacts that were basically enchanted. From what we gather on how alchemy works though, it is essentially the process of imbuing an object or a creature with the force in order to transform it into something more powerful, to alter it. Force users who were utilizing alchemy long before the Dark Jedi and Sith were ever a thing nearly perfected it. How long ago, you ask? Nearly 25,000 years. That's right. The first recorded people to utilize Force alchemy were the ancient Gen Jedi. In fact, alchemy was one of the main schools of study within the ancient Jedi Order, and it was how they actually crafted their Force-imbued blades. Taught at the Temple of Science, alchemy required its students to lean closer to the dark side, or at the time, Bogan which is how they termed it. While some mostly forged tools with alchemy, they did also mutate beasts and experiment with creatures, things that by today's standards of the Jedi would be barbaric. Many Jedi viewed alchemy altogether as perverse and heretical despite the Jedi Council deeming it permissible at the time, though it seems that they would change in the coming years, as the Jedi would flee from their world of Tython and rebrand themselves as the Jedi Order. Lots of things changed during this Jedi transition, especially regarding the use and practice of the Dark Side, what happened during the First Great Schism, and with it, the practice of alchemy was either reduced or was outlawed by the Jedi altogether, especially on living creatures. This would ultimately be what caused Ajunta Pal and Sorza Sin to be ostracized by the rest of the Jedi Order. But with this still remains the why. What exactly about Force Alchemy was considered so evil? If the process produced stronger creatures, tools, and weaponry, could it be used in moderation like other things in the Force? While the Force is hardly ever black and white, on this we can definitely say no. There isn't an ethical way to use alchemy, and we'll explain why. The idea of imbuing objects with the Force in order to provide one with more power was seen as selfish and unnecessary by the Jedi, and even imbuing their swords with the Force eventually fell out of practice, thus giving way to the rise of the lightsaber. While some Jedi would imbue wooden staffs or other pieces with the Force, they did so by meditating on it and bringing out the inner life to strengthen it, rather than putting the object through some sort of alchemical process. Alchemy practiced on living beings is completely inhumane in every sense, though. The idea of it basically using the Force to rewrite and forcibly mutate a creature's genetic makeup is horrid. This is a direct affront to the living Force. It uses the dark side to completely disrupt the nature and order of things. Windu put it like this, The Sith perversion of living things violates the very essence of the Force. Life creates it, allows us to tap into its potential. We obey it, not the other way around. 
We are parts of the organism, not the organism's breeders. Unfortunately, we have never been given a definitive idea of how this process actually works though. Besides occasionally seeing Sith bring objects out of boiling cauldrons, or watching Sidious use force lightning on a basin of mysterious liquids. Even in the Plagueis novel and in his research notes, detail is never shared about what they do exactly. I think the prospect of this process being so horrible, so horrible that it continues to be shrouded in mystery, is absolutely tantalizing. So if we don't know how it works, what exactly does alchemy cause? We do know that there are many accounts of various Sith creatures that have been mutated by alchemy, the most prominent of which is the creatures known as the Leviathans, the Warworms, and the Tarentatex. In the very beginning, we saw the Jedi mutating creatures like the Rancor, with one of the Jedi Rangers having a pet Rancor that she mutated and had added wings to it and she would ride the Rancor into battle on more than one occasion, with this being one of the earliest examples of alchemy in the lore. Leviathans, however, were a beast of a different breed. They were the crown jewel and achievement of the Sith sorceress Sorza Sin. Typically, Leviathans often are mutated creatures which are being employed by the Sith against Jedi, especially in the times of the Old War, during the Second Great Schism. The Dark Jedi used alchemy to create leviathans that were absolutely gargantuan, carnivorous reptiles created to roam the battlefields as living superweapons, drawing the life energies of every soldier and every Jedi into blister traps that dotted their back. Their hide was tough enough to resist lightsabers, and when they killed a being, they absorbed all of the victim's life force and knowledge. Even if a being was freed from the creature's blister traps, the victim was rapidly aged and weakened. Leviathans could also disrupt one's connection to the very force itself. Their victims are plagued with screams within their own minds, developing headaches, and triggering obsessive behavior centered around making the pain stop. Leviathans were mentally enslaved to their creators. They were a marvel of alchemical engineering and an absolute horror of the mind. It is safe to say that some things just are not meant to exist. Even Yoda agreed with this sentiment, as Yoda said, to kill a creature such as this would be considered mercy in the eyes of the Force. The Sith also have used alchemy to produce potent toxins and to forge powerful weaponry, several of which we have covered in past videos. However, one of note is the poison blade of Naga Sadao. Naga Sadao wielded his sword in place of a lightsaber when fighting the Republic in the Great Hyperspace War. Alchemy was also the main way that the ancient Sith forged all of their powerful artifacts, such as the Myrrh Talisman. The powers of this practice did not stop here either, as even Plagueis had viruses that were created using alchemy. This includes the Rakul Plague, and even such powers as reanimating the dead. In fact, the Blackwing virus was told to us from the Death Troopers novel was created basically by using Sith alchemy and by implementing it with new technology and discoveries under the Empire. Essentially, they created a zombie plague, a plague that Palpatine intended to use as a super weapon. The Sith have abused alchemy for centuries, creating the most vile and depraved creatures that the galaxy has ever seen, bioweapons, harbingers of death and chaos. The Emperor used the knowledge gained from a certain Sith alchemical process to create this bioweapon, and Palpatine intended to use it on the Rebellion. Fortunately, or unfortunately depending on your outlook though, something went horribly wrong with the outbreak, and it took over the Star Destroyer in unknown space, corrupting all personnel on board. Many powerful Sith practiced alchemy including Naga Sadao, Frida Nad, Exar Kun, Belia Darzu, Tenebris, Plagueis, and Sidious along with much more. Of all of them, Plagueis and Sidious in particular would find that sometimes alchemy had adverse effects or could backfire completely. This is what ended up causing the conception of Anakin within Shmi Skywalker, according to the Darth Plagueis novel. Well friends, what do you think about this strange and unnatural practice? If you would like to learn more, we can always do a much deeper dive into alchemy. But we wanted to hear your thoughts on the unforgivable force ability first, and some of its brief history and creation. But if you enjoyed this video, it would help us out immensely if you could leave a like and request future holocrons below. As always my friends, and fellow scholars of the force, as always, may the force be with you.